In the recent State of the Union, President Biden proposed five new housing plans, which would be the biggest federal housing intervention in over 50 years, costing taxpayers billions of dollars. Now, who knows if any of these plans will come to fruition, but if they did, the question is, will they actually create the result he claims it will and lower costs for home buyers and increase the supply of rental units? Well, to answer that question, the best way to predict future performance is to look at past performance. The federal government has come up with 42 programs over the last 80 years promising to solve the problem, and every one of them have failed miserably at lowering demand and increasing supply, and these new proposed programs by Biden will do the same. Cause more home price and rent inflation, not less, and waste billions in tax dollars on programs that have a history of scandal and failure. Let's discuss each of these five new proposed Biden programs and why they won't work. First, Biden called for a new $10,000 tax credit over two years to middle-class first-time home buyers. Known as the Mortgage Relief Credit, this credit is supposed to reduce the mortgage rate by more than 1.5 percentage points for two years on medium-priced homes. Now, about 3.5 million middle-class families are expected to benefit. The reality is this would do the opposite and increase demand for starter homes, which are already in short supply, thereby driving up prices, not lowering prices. In addition, many of the 3.5 million beneficiaries would have been able to buy a home without the credit anyways. All this credit will do is give first-time buyers more buying power to bid up the price of homes already in short supply. Now, the next Biden plan is the starter home credit. Now, this is to incentivize homeowners to sell who have a lower rate than the current rates. The president called for a new one-year tax credit of up to $10,000 to middle-class families who sell their starter home, and that's defined as homes below the area median home price in the country. Now, this credit would supposedly unlock inventory of affordable starter homes while helping nearly 3 million middle-class families move up the housing ladder and help empty nesters downsize. Now, there are two reasons why this won't work, but first, let's not forget who caused this problem and why it exists in the first place. These lock-in rates that homeowners don't want to let go of are the result of the Federal Reserve's excessive and lengthy interest rate suppression, which drove mortgage rates all the way down to a record low of 2.65% in early 2021. Then the Fed finally raised rates in 2022 to counter the strongest bout of inflation in over 40 years that it caused, resulting in mortgage rates to more than double to over 7%. So the government caused the problem and now has a solution that will only cause more problems. Here's why this starter home credit won't work. First, it's very unlikely this credit will entice 3 million locked in homeowners to sell out of their super low fixed rates. Think about it. The median price home that would qualify is valued at about 350,000. Lock in effect loans on these homes have a rate about three and a half percentage points below the current rate. So with an average loan balance of let's say 200,000, the interest savings over two years would be approximately 14,000, which is a bigger savings than the tax credit. And even if that seller did sell out of his low rate, that new move up buyer would need to find a replacement home in a tight market and would need to finance it with a 7% loan. Okay, the second reason why this credit is a waste of precious government resources is it doesn't take into consideration that a substantial number of these sellers would sell anyways without the credit. Okay, the next program that Biden proposed spending money on is the down payment assistance for first generation homeowners. Now the president's proposal would provide up to 25,000 in down payment assistance to first generation home buyers whose families haven't benefited from the generational wealth building associated with home ownership. An estimated 400,000 families would use the credit to purchase their first home. Now that sounds nice, but here's the problem. This program suffers from the same issue as the mortgage relief credit. It would only increase demand for starter homes by giving these buyers additional purchasing power to bid up the price of homes that are already in short supply. And again, many of the 400,000 beneficiaries would have been able to buy a home without the credit. Next, President Biden is calling for an expansion of the existing low income housing tax credit to build or preserve 1.2 million more affordable rental units. Now renters living in these properties supposedly save hundreds of dollars each month on their rent 
compared with renters with similar incomes who rent in the unsubsidized market. Now, aside from the fact that this program has been a debacle suffering substantial corruption, it hasn't worked, creating far fewer housing units than promised. Part of the issue is it crowds out the private sector and building these units is costly, not to mention poorly managed. Now, this program is the perfect example of the government's solution to a failed program is to throw more money at the failed program. And finally, Biden proposed more spending on the neighborhood home tax credit. Now, this tax credit would incentivize the building or renovation of affordable homes for home ownership, which would lead to the construction or preservation of over 400,000 starter homes in communities throughout the country. Here again, the federal government has a long history of failure. Notwithstanding numerous efforts, it has never successfully scaled up or subsidized building or renovation programs. More throwing good money after bad by wasting tax dollars on a program where the money already spent has produced no meaningful result or benefit. In a nutshell, to summarize these programs Biden's proposing, it will only increase demand while leaving supply constraints in place, drive up prices further, and be yet another government waste of taxpayer money. People who claim new federal subsidies will be no better off, and anyone who misses out on the subsidies will be worse off. Look, Economics 101 makes it clear that the only way to lower prices is to increase the supply of inventory, but time and time again, history proves that that does not happen by easing credit and creating distorted and corrupt subsidies. When will we learn that these federal programs don't work and actually make the problem worse? So what should we do? There is a growing consensus that I agree with that one way to provide a real solution to increasing housing inventory is for states and local municipalities to free up the market from unduly restrictive zoning and land use restrictions that constrain supply and drive up home prices. If the government can do anything, loosen up density requirements, shorten approval processes, and ease environmental restrictions, just to name a few, and we will see a swarm of naturally affordable small-scale developments. Now, I'd love to hear what you think. Leave a comment, let me know if you agree or disagree, and what you think the solution is. Now, the good news is, if you know how to play the real estate game, it doesn't really matter. I've been a full-time real estate investor now for 20 years, and whether the market goes up or down, and regardless of what the government does, I make my own economy. I know how to play the real estate game. And if you're ready to start making six and even seven figures a year flipping houses, be sure to get my advanced training course called Eight Week Academy. Best of all, I'll give it to you for free. Just go to eightweekacademy.com. And finally, it's not about the money, it's about having the time and freedom to be, do, have, and give everything God has in store for you. That's what it's really all about, and I'll see you on the next video.